Hi, this is Gregory Jackson for GrebJack.com. I thought I would put together a quick tutorial that will show you how to create a Legend of Zelda Lost Woods type puzzle in RPG Maker MV. My own game, Krytlor, the Black Blade at the Edge of the World, will make use of at least one of these. I'm not showing that off in this tutorial because I want the players to experience it for themselves. Anyone who has played the original Legend of Zelda will remember the Lost Woods. A specific path needed to be taken to get you to the area to the west of the woods. If you went any other direction, the puzzle reset and you had to start over. The only way you could go was back to the east unless you completed the puzzle. Let's get started. Feel free to follow along with me in RPG Maker MV. Click File, then New Project. I'm setting the name to Tutorial 1 and the game title to Lost Woods Style Puzzle. Let the program copy the files. Feel free to go grab some coffee or a three-course meal while you wait. Now that the files are copied, we can get started. We're not going to worry about changing the map size or any fancy layout editing. In fact, before we do anything with the maps, we need to set a couple of things up. Click the button with the gear symbol on it to open the database. Select items from the menu on the left. You should see a list of four items, Potion, Magic Water, Dispel Herb, and Stimulant. They are numbered 0001 through 0004, respectively. Click the Change Maximum button below this list. Set the maximum to 5. Click OK. You should now see a blank item numbered 0005. Left-click it to select it. Enter Ring of Passage into the name field. As you type, you will notice that it fills in the name on the numbered list as well. Double-click the box next to the word Icon. Find and select the icon that looks like a ring, then click OK. Enter something in the description field. I entered This ring radiates warmth, but is cool to the touch. Set item type to key item. Set consumable to no. Set scope to none. Now you can click OK. You're probably wondering why we just created a ring of passage. After we complete the pathway puzzle, I want us to have a way to avoid having to go through it again. We're going to put the ring in a chest which will be on the screen past the puzzle. It's a non-essential item really, but it makes a good bonus for exploring whatever areas are barred by the puzzle. Now let's set up the screen immediately preceding the puzzle screen. You can design the screen however you want, but I've set it up to have just one exit to the right or east, so make sure you at least have that. Now let's create the map where we'll put the chest with the ring of passage in it. As you can see, I've made mine look like the exact opposite of the starting map. Now I'm creating two more maps, one with only one exit to the south, and one with only exit to the north. And now we create the puzzle map. You can create its layout however you want so long as it has exits in all four directions. I'm keeping mine very simple. Let's go ahead and place that chest with the ring of passage inside. Go to the map with only one exit to the west. Switch to event mode. Right click somewhere in the middle and mouse over quick event creation and select treasure. Select Item, set it to Ring of Passage, then click OK. A treasure chest now appears where you right-clicked. OK, we've got all the maps we need. We've got our reward staged. Now it's time to start setting up the puzzle. Go to the first map, the one with only one exit to the east. Right-click the eastmost square where the exit will be. Mouse over Quick Event Creation and select Transfer. Click the button below Location. Select Map 005 and left-click one square in from its western exit edge. Then click OK. Now click the button under Direction, select Right, and click OK. The exit from the starting map will now take the player to the puzzle map. Repeat this process for maps 002 through 004 so they all link to map 005 correctly. Now on Map 5, make a transfer event leading back to Map 1. This will be the only regular exit for Map 5. The rest will be tied to the puzzle. 
If you want to take a little breather here, pause the video. If you're ready to go, then great. Let's set up the puzzle. First, we want to decide which paths the player must take to solve it. I'm going to use South, East, North, and then North, East, or South. So that means that the puzzle will have five stages to it. Stage zero, the puzzle has not started. The player is on the puzzle map, but has not taken the first correct path. Stage one, the player has taken the first correct path. Stage two, the player has taken the second correct path. Stage three, player has taken the third correct path, and at this point going north, east, or south will lead to maps three, two, and four, respectively. Stage four, the final stage only gets set if the player has the ring of passage. We are going to use a variable to track the progress through the puzzle. On map 005, right click on the northmost square where the northern exit will be. Click New. Click New Event Page four times. There should now be a total of five numbered tabs above the Conditions panel. Now click OK. Right click the event you just created and click Copy. Now paste the event on the east and south exits. Right click the north exit event and select Edit. On tab 1, click the checkbox next to Variable. You should now see 0001 listed on the button to the immediate right. Click on that. This is the variable selector. Make sure that 0001 is selected on the list to the right. In the name field below the list, enter Puzzle Stage as shown. Click OK. This one variable will let us track the progress of the puzzle. Make sure the value is set at greater than or equal to zero for tab one. Set priority to below characters if it isn't already. Now select player touch under trigger. Essentially, if the player walks over the event and puzzle stage equals zero, the instructions in tab one's contents list will be executed. What instructions? We're about to set those up. Right-click the first line in the contents list, the one with the black diamond. Select New to bring up the Event Commands window. Remember, we're working with the Northern Exit event now. The path is South, East, North, and then North, East, or South. North is not the correct path to take for advancing to Stage 1, so we want to make sure the puzzle stays at Stage 0. Select Control Variables. For Variable, make sure that Puzzle Stage is selected. For Operation, select Set. For Operand, select Constant and make sure it is set to zero. Click OK. The next thing we want to do is make the event transfer the player to the south entrance of Map 005. Right-click the second line in the Contents section and select New to again bring up the Event Commands window. What we are looking for is not on the first tab. Click Tab 2. Under Audio and Video, click Play SE. This is where we will choose a sound effect for when the player is transferred. Scroll down until you find the sound effect called Move 1. Select it and then click OK. Now we need to make the event actually transfer the player to the new location. On the third line, create another event command. This one is also found on Tab 2. It's actually the first one listed as Transfer Player. Make sure that Direct Designation is selected and click the button below it. Select Map 005, set the destination point as shown, then click OK. Set Direction to Up, leave Fade set to Black, then click OK. That's it for setting up Stage 0 for the North Exit event. North also is not the correct path for Stage 1 to advance to Stage 2, so you can use the exact same three event commands in Tab 2 of the event. Under Tab 2, make sure that the variable checkbox is clicked, Puzzle Stage is selected, and the value set to 1. Set Priority to Below Characters and Trigger to Player Touch. Click OK. For Tab 3, do everything the same except make sure that the equal to or greater than value for Puzzle Stage is 2 under Conditions. Now since North is the correct path to make Stage 2 advance to Stage 3, when you set up the first event command, make sure that the operand value is 3. 
For tab 4, repeat the process for tab 3, except set the equal to or greater than conditions value for puzzle stage to 3. Leave the control variables event command off the contents list. In its place, put a play me command with mystery as the selected me. And set the transfer player command up so that it links to map 003. For tab 5, start by duplicating the settings for tab 4. Under conditions, set the equal to or greater than value for puzzle stage to 4. What you want to do differently in the content section is remove the play me command and change the play se command to use the teleport se or sound effect. Then change the transfer player command so that fade is set to white. Once you've done this, click OK. Using the North Exit event as a template, taking into account when to advance the puzzle to the next stage, which maps to transfer the player to, and what direction the player needs to be facing when transferred, set up the East Exit event and the South Exit event. Once that is done, switch to map 002. This step is mission critical. It sets up how the game determines whether or not the player needs to go through the puzzle or if it can be bypassed with the Ring of Passage. Right-click on the Transfer event and then select Edit. We're going to modify this event so it will no longer be just a regular transfer event. Under Contents, right-click the Play SE command and select New. On Tab 1, under Flow Control, click Conditional Branch. We are going to be checking to see if the player has the Ring of Passage. So click Tab 4, select Item. Set it to Ring of Passage. Click the checkbox next to Create Else Branch, then click OK. We've set the event to check to see whether or not the player has the ring. Now we need to set up what happens if he does or does not have it. Right-click the line below if Party has Ring of Passage and select New. On Tab 1, under Game Progression, click Variable Control. Under Variable, make sure Single is selected and that it is set to Puzzle Stage. Under Operation, make sure Set is selected. Under Operand, select Constant and set it to 4, then click OK. Put another Control Variables command under Else. The only thing different here is that the Operand needs to be set to 0. Right-click on the If Party Has Ring of Passage line and click Copy. Now go into Map 001, edit the transfer event. Right-click the Play SE command and select Paste. Do the same to the transfer events on maps 003 and 004. And we are done. Save the game and then test it out. For Grebjack.com, this is Gregory Jackson.